Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lindsay and today I have some journal flip throughs to share with you from three different artists that have consigned their journals to sell in my shop. You can check out my shop in the link below or if you'd like to become one of my artists and to consign journals with me, you can find my email address or my Facebook group below as well. All right, let's get right into this. I have my coffee, it's a good morning and we're going to get into this. This is the first one. I love this size. I don't see a lot this size. It's cute. We have some fibers hanging off the top here. It says beauty and dreams on the back. This is called Bohemian Rhapsody. This is from Amy, Amy Tucker. All right, that Okay, that's just the info card. What's the size? Seven by four. How cute. I should try this size. I am most of the time stuck in making nine by six, five and a half by eight and a half that size because you actually save a lot of time by making that size because you don't have to cut down pages. However, I got a lot of scrap paper. I need to use up. So doing a size like this would probably be helpful for me. I'm loving these dyed pages. They're just this light pinkish purple. Some tags in there. Really cute. Oh, lots of different pages and textures. Perfect for working in. Isn't that pretty? Wonderful, just wonderful size to carry around with you. Would look really cute on a shelf too. And then Amy sent this one. Got a little tuck spot on the front, super cute. So tuck spots on the front are wonderful for also putting in a photo. She put a tag in, it's really cute. And you can keep this tag in the front pocket, but if you wanted to, you could journal on it. You could stick it somewhere in the journal and put a family photo, a photo of your pet. You could, depending upon what you use the journal for. So say you use it for a homemaker's type, to-do list, brain dump type journal. You could stick in your daily like scratch to-do list in the front, a shopping list in the front. There's lots of things that you can do or you can leave the tag in the front and you could put uh, a secret note or some info and then just tuck it back there. Ladies Vintage Nature Journal. Very nice. Oh, this looks like it's a very, very light paper and it looks like she's stamped on it. Isn't that pretty? Love that idea. I have some paper that's really thin like this that I picked up at um, some bargain bins I have nearby. I'm not 100% sure what that thin of a paper was for, um, but does work well. These are, these are original, like 19, I would say 20s, 1930s. I had some of those, I don't think I have any left. Large journal card. Love large journal cards. I never make enough of them. Beautiful stamping. Just the black. It's very eye-catching. Got a little folder tucked in there. So pretty creamy pretty. Some stenciling and washi tape. It's just a stamped page. Really pretty. A great way to play with your stamps. And you know what you could do? If you have a table or a counter, you could put out several sheets. Six, eight, ten, however many you could fit. And then get a little bit of stamps and an ink pad. And if you take your, your heart stamp here, stamp the heart on each page. Go to the next stamp. Stamp the flower on each page. And you could make a whole bunch to set aside to use in your journals. I find that trying to find papers to use in your journals, if you don't want to just print them all, which, you know, I like printing them, but I also like different textures. 
It's great to have things ready ahead of time. Whether you buy ledger paper, you dye your own paper, you turn packaging into paper, you order paper from Amazon, you find paper at the thrift store. It's always great to have all that those extra types of paper, look at how pretty that is, that you can stick in your journals, especially if you make a lot of journals like I do and like a lot of my artists do. Okay, now we're on to another artist. Those two were from Amy. This one is, well, I don't remember who it was from, but you can see the paper on the front is pink and yellow bees. Coffee break, excuse me. <clears throat> two signatures. Pink and Yellow Bees is one of my paper packs. You can purchase it on my website. Either use the search bar or just poke around in the Lindsay's Digitals section. I also sell them printed, so. Okay. So this would be a challenge journal. Um, this is for, uh, um, got a name? Connie, Connie Harvey. And the challenge that we've been working on is this pink and yellow and lemons and the bees. So this is called Work of the Bumblebee and it is pink and yellow bees, luscious lemons. It, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I run challenges with my artists. They can create journals using specific digitals and they get extra commission on their consigned journals for those. So those of you who know what I'm talking about, great. And if you need info, like I said, my email's below. So this is uh, from Luscious Lemons, Pink and Yellow Bees. There should be button labeled botanicals in here and wildflower script journal cards, Canadian wildflower cards, fruit publication ads, and juicy fruit, lots of different ones. She used this page, which I love. This is from um, Birds and Bees. That wasn't part of the challenge, but Yes, I forgot I had that page. So perfect. Fruit ads. This is from My Fair Garden. Print of an old book cover, The Flower Garden. Got Juicy Fruit. These are from the Ephemera Pack, Juicy Fruit. This is from My Fair Garden, Canadian Wildflower Script Journal Cards, My Fair Garden. She's made a, here's button labeled botanicals. She's made like a garden bee themed, and I really like that. That's pretty. Just have the coffee dyed on the edge there. Look at that. Lots and lots of pages to work with. What is this? Curious, curious. It's a little, it's a little ephemera holder. Fun. Oop. There's like, that is so cute as an envelope. This is the, one of the pages from Fruit Ads. And she turned it into an envelope. I feel like there's something inside of it, so I'm gonna peek. Yep, just some goodies. Love that little bee stamp. Oh. Get back in there. Cute. Pretty belly band. Look at how the purple plays off here. I wonder if she just dipped the ends in coffee. I'll have to try that. Super pretty. Okay. Nice. Nice and chunky. If you like them chunky, this is chunky. Lots of pages. And I love how she kept the cover simple. I am a huge fan of decorating up your cover. Huge fan. But sometimes I forget the beauty in some of these digitals or papers. And I've, um, I'm working on a collection of journals right now using one of my kits. It was inspired by one of my artists. I'll talk about that more later when the, that video comes up. But I'm trying to keep just the simplicity of the prints for those pages. Okay, one artist left. Look at this. 
another bee journal. This is from a different artist. Look at the bees on this ribbon and the bee fabric. Look at the applique. Look at the little bees and the looks like she did some hand stitching. Look at the tabs and the dangles. Wow. Hand stitching. Oh, a little hive shaker pocket or shaker sticker. All right. Who is this from? Hopefully I've got info on it. This is called Honey Hive from Phyllis. Here's the digital she used. And also the Gardenia paper pad by First Edition. Honey Blossoms paper pad by DCWV and Coffee Dye Paper and Porch Prints. So, Phyllis, this is already incredible. I'm excited to see. Look at that. She made dripping honey. Wow. More dripping honey. I love that idea. Beautiful papers. Bright yellows. What is that? An old... It feels painted. Very nice foiled bees. Look at that for a belly band. That's really neat. You have a top tuck here. You could tuck something in. Look at that. There are little gold bees in there. It's like a little shaker. Isn't that huge? You could put that somewhere as a tuck spot too. Oh, lots of journaling space. Clever. Canadian Wildflower Script journal pages. They coordinate with the cards. Oh, wow. She cut that out to make a tuck spot. Clever. Little flips. Oh, that is so cute. Stenciling. It's more of that lemon paper. Wow, Phyllis. What a work of art. What perfection. Thank you for showcasing my digitals in such a beautiful way. And then I think we have some other ones from Phyllis. Let's take a peek at this one. I love this fabric. So much texture to it. Look, we've got little tucks here as well that you could tuck photos in if you wanted to. Look, there's a little bee on that flower. Look at the trim. Got a couple dangles here. I'm going to guess this is her second challenge journal. Sweet Summer Bee. And then she's used pretty much the same digitals and papers. But she's really, I see how she's focused on this paper pad here, the pink and yellow bees. So it has its own feel. It's a little bit of a different color scheme. Gorgeous. Look at the little lemon on there. Super cute. Got a little tuck spot up at the top with the lemons. Love the bees. I would say that the focus of this challenge was more the yellow and summertime, but I absolutely adore taking it and using popping the bees out of there and using the bees. Very pretty. Really nice, Phyllis. What a beautiful closure, too. Colors are just perfect. And one more. Look at that. I think that's a graphic 45 image. Fairy. 
This is fabric. It's beautiful. There's a flower on the back. Look at the edging. Fairy wings. It's called Fairy Tale. She used my kit, Fairy Frolics, and um, Vintage Image Club. If you have that, she used the Ferns folder. If you don't have Vintage Image Club, you can still get it in the Ultimate Lifetime Collection. It's been retired there. You can find that um, at the top. There's a scrolling banner on my website, and one of those rectangles is um, Ultimate Lifetime. You click on that, and you will get, get that there with a whole bunch of other things. This is from Fairy Frolics. So is this. So is this. And then, of course, adding in Graphic 45. Oh, wow. Look at how... Oh, can't get it back in there. Look how pretty that is. Little cute fairy stamp there. These are all from Fairy Frolics. My kit, Fairy Frolics. So is that. Here's the ferns from Vintage Image Club. And then it says the Winding Garden Path. This is from Fairy Frolics. So if you are working on a fairy journal, then check out Fairy Frolics. A lot of this is from Fairy Frolics. And if you want a freebie fairy paper pack, my Facebook group, which you can find below in the description box, under the announcement section, if you scroll down a little bit, there's a freebie paper pack. I put in there the Betty Fairy Book. It's an old public domain children's book that I've turned into a paper pack. And you can get that free. Here's from Fairy Frolics too. Of course I knew there are no fairies, but that needn't prevent me thinking there is. Ellen Montgomery, Anne of Avonlea. Perfect quote for that. This is beautiful. Just love what she's done here made it so pretty. This is from Fairy Frolics 2. Oh, she even, here's the cover. Oh, she actually turned it into a little book. Okay. So that is possible. Um, the, it's free over on my Facebook group. Just go over, join my Facebook group, find it, but it is an old book and I just, kind of rescued it, but you can see the Betty Fairy book. Just the story is all here and she made it into like a little storybook notebook and tucked it in. Love it. Oh, so cute, Phyllis. Thank you for sharing that. I hope that you all enjoyed this. I did. I definitely am inspired to work on my journals today. And I hope that I will see all of you tomorrow with another video. My boys actually start back at school tomorrow. So in the next couple weeks, I will probably do more craft with me videos back at my desk like I used to um, before my living room turned into a free for all <laughs> for the summer. But we'll see how that goes. Um, I do love sharing these journals for my artists and want to make sure I stay on top of that as well. But there should be more journals shared tomorrow. It will most likely either be more marketplace journals or if I finish my collection, I might do a collection video. It is poppy themed. I was inspired. Who was I inspired by? It's awful that I don't remember, but I think it was from a couple days ago. It was a video. I think it was Beatrice. And she had used some of my Peaceful Poppies kit. And I said, oh, I forgot I had done that kit. It's a beautiful kit. And so I am making a collection of journals around that. They're coming out really well. I love how creamy they are. I think you'll all will enjoy them as well. And I hope that I'll be able to inspire you on how to use one digital kit from, it doesn't have to be from me, from any digital artist to make a collection of journals. I did some things different this time than I normally do. And so I can't wait to share that with you. If it's not tomorrow, it'll be within, uh, it'll be Friday or Monday. It'll be within the next few days, most likely. And I'm very excited to share that with you. I hope you'll take a second to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and take a second to check and see if you're subscribed. If you're not, I would love to have you a part of this YouTube family. I'll see all of you tomorrow.